our cares to the side, that we're not allowing, Lord, the outer things of the world to be involved with this inner worship today. God, we just pray that we would submit to you, God, a heart of worship today, that you would just come and invade in the sanctuary on the airways, Lord God, and just move. There are people who are in dire need. There are people who are struggling. There are people who are losing hope. But God, there's always hope in you. We can always trust and depend, Lord God, that in our darkest hour, amen, you will rise and shine and show your glory. So, Father, we thank you, Lord God. We honor you, and we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. We surrender now to our choir, amen, as they render our doxology. Good morning, good morning. Let's give God a hand shout of praise. Come on, we can do better than that. God has been good to us. We are about to enter our order of service, um, fifth Sunday service. And right now we're going to have um, our worship and devotion with Sister Betty Hayes, Sister Brenda Best, and Sister Sarah Anderson. Good morning, church. Good morning. I'm a visiting member, and I'm not a singer, so I want you to join in with me with this song. Um, I know we all know it. Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my Glory, glory, hallelujah, since I lay my burdens down, friends don't treat me like they used to. Burn down. 
Good morning to everyone. We are going to line and sing a familiar hymn, and we're asking that everyone will sing with uplifted voices. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify, who gave his son my soul to save and fit it for the sky. To serve this present age, my calling to fulfill, oh, may it all my power engage to do my master's will. A charge to keep I have, a God to glorify. A charge to sing these next two lines if you would please rise to serve thy present age my calling to fulfill to
Praise your Holy Father. Praise your Holy God, Father. Merciful God, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before you today, Holy God. Being grateful, Holy God, because we're still here. We're grateful, Holy God, because you are God. You love us, Holy God. And now, Lord, we know you love us. You gave your son for us, our Savior, Jesus. And we praise you, Holy God, for his goodness, his mercy. We praise you, Holy Father, for abundant life, which is, Lord, he's presenting to us. We praise you, Holy Father, for him being the provider, the everything, precious Lord, we need. And because of that mercy for God, we come today asking you in Jesus' name. Oh, God, that you bless, precious Lord, our leaders in the White House. And we praise your Holy Father for the one that's gone. Precious Lord, and we praise and ask your blessing, Holy God, on the ones that's there now, mercy for God. We ask, Holy Father, that you will give them the boldness, the wisdom, merciful God, to make right decisions. For the good of this land, this nation, holy God, your people, in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray for leaders everywhere, holy God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Household, church houses, everywhere. We are your people, sheep and your pastor. We asking you to guide us, merciful God, like only you can do, in the mighty name of Jesus. One thing we know about you, Holy God, you are greater than we ourselves. We know for a fact right now, Holy God, we need you to lead and guide us, precious Lord. We need you, Holy God, to do a healing in this land of this COVID virus, in the virus, Holy God, in the mighty name of Jesus. We love you, Holy God. We're grateful to you. Knowing for a fact, merciful God, we can do nothing without you. We're grateful you never leave us, not forsake us. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. We're grateful, Holy God, and we ask your blessing in every way possible. Wherever we go, merciful God, we know you're with us. We know your Holy Spirit is right there ready to do its job. We ask, Holy Father, that you unblind our minds and our ears, precious Lord, so we'll hear, see, precious Lord, and be and do whatever it is you have us to do. Precious Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, because we love you so much, we can't do nothing without you. We ask all these blessings in the merciful and powerful name of Jesus to your glory for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. I want to be just like him, my Lord. I want to be just like him, my Lord. I want to be just like him when he comes. Yeah, well, he's coming on the cloud and Every eye shall see him well. I want to be just like him when he comes. Well, well, I want to pray just like him, my Lord. Well, well. Oh, well, he's coming on the cloud. Every eye shall see him well. I want to be just like him when he comes. Well, I want to pray just like him, my Lord. My Lord. Yeah, when he comes, hey, he's coming. Well, I want to be just like him when he comes. Well, I want to talk just like him, my Lord. My Lord. Oh, when he comes, hey, he's coming on the cloud and every eye shall Hey, I want to be just like him when he comes. Well, I want to pray just like him. I want to pray just like him. I want to pray just like him when he comes. Yeah, well, he's coming on the cloud and every eye shall see. 
like him when he comes. First of all, let me apologize. I did not introduce myself when I stood up this morning. But I was so excited and ready to have church, I was ready to get into this thing. I am on your programs, it does say Mistress of Ceremony, Sister Betty Osborne. She is a little under the weather. So those of you that know the word of prayer, please say a prayer for her and keep her lifted up. However, nevertheless, the Bible says, be ye always ready. So I am standing in for her today, and my name is Julia Hamilton, and I am going to do the welcome now. On behalf of our Pastor L. Don Middleton, First Lady Middleton, the entire New Pleasant Grove Church family, we want to welcome you here today. Whether you're on Facebook Live or you're here in the flesh, we want you to sit back, feel at home, and hopefully you'll hear a word that'll touch and pierce your heart today. And you will not be the same when you leave here today or when you turn off your Facebook today. So welcome, welcome, welcome. Now we'll have pastoral reflections from our pastor. Good morning to all those who are here in the house and to those who are online. We greet you in the name of Jesus. Um, I need your help a little bit this morning. Um, I don't know if uh, there was something going on at home or if there's something going on at the house. Amen. But uh, amen. I still believe that there's an opportunity for worship in this house. Amen. Amen. There is an opportunity for worship in this house. Amen. Amen. Because we want to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. And if it's not an inconvenience for anyone, I'm a worshiper, man. I just want to thank God for how great he has been in my life. Amen. Amen. And I know I'm not the only one who wants to contribute to this worship service. I wish Brother Mike would join me at some point, amen, to give us some melodies unto the Lord where we can set this atmosphere, amen, where God can be God, amen, that he can move in the realm of the spirit, amen, that the supernatural power of God can manifest, amen, amen. Give him your best praise, amen. He is worthy to be praised. He is faithful. He is true. He is our healer, he is our deliverer, he is our strong tower, he is our battle axe, he is our refuge, he is our strength, he is our covering, he is our peace, he is our joy, he is our contentment, he is our provider, he is Elohim, he is El Shaddai, El El Yon, Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Nisi, Jehovah sit canoe. God, we bless you. God, we honor you, God. We give you the glory, Lord. God, we bless you. God, we just bless your name, Lord. We just bless you, Father. Your faithfulness, Lord. Your faithfulness towards us, Lord. God, we just want to thank you. Thank you, Father. Mm, we're just grateful, Lord. Thank you. Mm. Mm. Blessed be the rock of my salvation.
mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Angels bow before him. Heaven and earth adore him. What a mighty God Come on, sing like you mean it. What a, what a mighty God we one. I love to praise Him. I love to praise Him. I love to praise Him. Oh, I love to praise Him. Well, He's my rock. psalmist says in Psalms 27 and 6, he says, now shall my head be lifted up above my enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy, and I will sing, and I will sing praises unto the Lord. And if you've ever been attacked by the enemy in any area of your life, <laughs> amen. And you understand that God is your deliverer. Amen. 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 It says that when you have testified that God has delivered you from the attacks of your enemies, he says when you enter into his tabernacle, yes. his sanctuary, that you should come with joy and praise. Amen. 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 That's something you just like you got your ID on you, you ought to come with your praise. Yes. Amen. You ought to come with worship in your heart. Yes. Amen on the goodness of God, how he brought you through another week. Amen. I'm going to leave that alone. Amen. We got to preach in the house. Amen. Amen. I just love to worship the Lord. Amen. He has been so faithful and so good to me. Amen. And I know I'm not the only one that can make that testimony this morning. And so thank you so much for just releasing praise into this house that we can honor and give God the praise that he rightfully deserves. Amen. We greet you again in the name of Jesus, amen, to our visitors who are here, to those online, amen, while you stirring those peas and collard greens, amen, just wave back at us, amen. We thank you for joining us here today. I'm excited, amen, a dear friend of our family, amen, that has been given opportunity to come join us today, amen, Minister Brenda Stafford, who is here to share God's word with us today, amen, we go way back. Amen, like recliners, amen. Good to see her husband, Brother Albert is here as well as her family. Many familiar faces here today to support the gift of God that he has put in her. Prepare your hearts for an encouraging word. Amen, amen. We're living in times now, man, we can't do church as normal. 
Amen. If you're continually doing the rigmarole of the past, that's not going to work. We're living in some perilous times, and we need a word that will anchor our soul and take us further in the destiny that God has called us to. I hope I got somebody that understands that. Amen. We need God's word. We need his prophetic, fo prophetic voice in the times that we're living in. So we're grateful to have her here as well as her family and to those who are visiting us online. Amen. We are also... Um, we all know that Reverend Fleming Tarver, who was very instrumental in helping uh, New Pleasant Grove form uh, when the church elders came together and wanted to reestablish Pleasant Grove under New Pleasant Grove. He was very instrumental in that, and he's a very uh, imp important person in regards to that. So he reached out. They are still having their pastoral anniversary in the month of February. We know that this is something that we have enjoyed for many years, especially the dinner afterwards. Yeah, I knew somebody would say amen on that. Uh, I see where your heart is at. <laughs> amen, amen. They're still having the services and I just couldn't tell them no, amen. And so they are just like us, they are practicing uh, the requirements of the CDC, uh, social distancing, uh, temperatures check and all those things. So we will be going to render service with them on Friday, February the 12th at 7.30 p.m. Amen. It won't be sit-down dinners. There'll be takeouts to go after the service. Amen. So those who have a burden to come and join us with, that, with us on that night, amen, please make those proper arrangements. I'll make an announcement next week if we will have the bus, amen, of those who want to travel available for that as well. And so please uh, add that to your calendars of your availability, amen, and plan accordingly. Let us prepare to give unto the Lord. I know God has been faithful, amen, and we want to give this opportunity, amen. As our leaders come for the offering, please, I ask that you would leave the podium here. Don't remove the podium this morning. I thank you so kindly. And let's prepare to give unto the Lord. To those who are on Facebook, remember that there are several ways to give. There is Cash App. There's Give Lafay. Ken, what you what you doing pulling at your shirt? What's, what's to who? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. We'll just remove that one. Okay. I thought you had on a Buccaneer shirt or something. You was trying to flaunt with the Buccaneers. Amen. <laughs> Amen. God bless you so much for your concern. Thank you for your commitment. And thank you for giving into this ministry as we can do, continue to do what the Lord has called us to do here at New Pleasant Grove. God bless you. Us this morning to give our tithes and offering, Lord God. We ask you, Lord, that you will bless each and every one that give. Bless the one who have desire and not the need, that on the next gathering, Lord God, we'll be able to give the same blessing to them. All in Jesus' name we do ask. Amen. Amen. Savior. 
fix it. Somebody know he can fix it. Somebody know he can fix it. Fix it, Jesus. Go to the hospital. Somebody there. Breaking in pain. Just one touch from you, Lord, would make it all right. Just one touch from you, Lord, would make it all right. Now we will have the introduction of the speaker by Sister Kamara Garrett Cooper. After that, we will have another song of praise from the choir, and then the next voice you will hear will be our, our guest speaker, Minister Brenda Garrett Stafford. Good morning. It is a pleasure and an honor, first of all, to be here with Pastor and Mrs. Middleton and all of you. You are our family, and so we are just glad to be here. It's also an honor to introduce our speaker for today. Um, when I asked her what she wanted me to say, she sent me about five or six bullets of some facts, and I thought to myself, you know, I'm way too long-winded for that. So I had to come up with a, a little something to add to it, but I promise you I won't be too long. Um, my mother is nothing short of amazing. We don't have time for me to tell you about her story, but like many of you wives, many of you mothers and ministers of the gospel, she's made numerous sacrifices. Yes, for her family, but also for the body of Christ. Imagine this, my mother of four, often having to take on the responsibilities of two parents that allowed my father to do what God had called him to do in the ministry. Much of my life, I didn't understand her sacrifices and her submission. I often viewed it as weakness, but when I began enduring the trials of life, I understood that her wisdom was in her submission, that her greatest strength was submission and that her sacrifice came from loving others. My mother's ministry was her service. Mama had a passion for women and children. She served as a, a school teacher for a stint of time and began Bible studies for wives and young women. She's countless, I mean, she's counseled countless wives and mothers. My mother is also beyond committed to the word of God. She spends hours, and I do mean hours, digging in the word, and I, for one, am glad to be a recipient of the overflow. One of her many, many godchildren, we have umpteen million god brothers and sisters, 
Um, once he committed that at 2 a.m. on any given night, he knew his godmama would be up crying, praising God, praying, and grading papers. That was while she was teaching. When my daddy passed in 2004, I remember my mother telling me that she felt lost without him. She always saw her ministry as an extension of my father's, and that's probably true. She was his helpmeet and was his support. But when my father grew ill, she was in school at Eckerd College. She always wanted to finish what she had begun at Indiana University and get her degree. But then I came along and she stopped to be a mother. So she was in school and caring for my father. And when my father passed, she could have quit. But she went on and graduated, earning her business administration degree at the age of 54. She put that, yes, give her a hand. She put that degree to work for several years, first in jobs and then owning her own business. In 2010, she joined the ministry of Apostle Jonathan Anderson. And again, she did what she does. She got to work. She led a small group and a Bible study for empty nesters. She was teaching and leading, and finally in 2018, she was ordained, making official what everyone already knew. She was put on this earth to declare the word of God. In 2019, after declaring she would never, ever marry again, she found love again with Airman Albert Stafford. He takes excellent care of our mother and loves her with his whole heart. My sisters and I are beyond grateful. We witnessed a woman who declared she felt lost, find everything that God had for her. She is the mother of four girls, has three sons-in-law and five grandchildren. But when she remarried, she gained and was blessed to add three more daughters, one son, one son-in-law, and five more grandchildren. She is a member of Exceeding Grace Christian Center where Apostle Jonathan Anderson serves. And although retired, she still serves through her volunteering in the community, in particular at the Next Step Pregnancy Center. I will reiterate what I said in the very beginning. She is amazing, and I am beyond blessed to call her mommy. After the choir sings, please welcome Minister Brenda Garrett Stafford. Praise the Lord, everybody. Come on, let's put our hands together and give God a big round of, a pray, of applause for, for who he is and everything that he, come on, we can do better than that. Come on, we're talking about the God that kept us throughout this week. Not only this week, we are here today, we're able to lift our hands in the sanctuary, and we've come to give God glory. This song we're gonna, I'm going to do is just a simple uh, uh, hymn that I've done many times, but it, every time I do it, I feel it's just as effective. How many of you know that God is a wonderful God? Okay, he's a great God. And as we look around and see the things that he does, as we look into the earth and see how we can wake up, go to sleep at night and wake up and the sun is up and the birds are flying and chirping. God is a great God, amen? amen. This song simply says, how great thou art. i 
consider all the world my hands have made. I see the star and I hear the rolling thunder. I I've been depressed in my life sometimes, but this is, verse says, sometimes the clouds hang low, maybe it's just me, I can hardly see the road, I, I ask the question, Lord, anybody ask God?
not feel good all the time, but I'll say thank you, Lord. You may talk about me behind my back, but I'll still say thank you, Lord. Because the Bible says no weapon formed against us shall prosper. So I'll say thank you, Lord. so good to not just me but my family my friends and everybody else in my life and when I cried he dries all of my tears away turn my midnight into day So I'll just say, thank you, Lord. I'll just say, thank you, Lord. Can y'all sit there with me? I'll say, thank you, Lord. I, I won't complain. God, we thank the Lord. Well, there's no sense complaining. Can't do anything about things. We have to let the Lord handle that. I thank God to Pastor Middleton and First Lady. Um, we are grateful, just grateful to be here. Thankful for the invitation. And we thank this body that for your support, not only because we're here, but your support for your pastors and the fact that you're here and you're doing God's will for you in your respective places. And that's all he asks from all of us is to do what he has given us to do. Um, I thank my daughter I almost ran out the back door crying. <laughs> but uh, that was just a beautiful tribute. Um, and I'm sure I'm not the only one that can say that, especially for mothers uh, and fathers. We all sacrifice in some kind of way. Um, I thank my husband, Albert Stafford. And I also have my second oldest daughter, Adrienne. Uh, and my first granddaughter, Ariel, and my son-in-law, Derek. So they're all here in support. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Let's bow our heads for a word of prayer. Lord God, we thank you. We praise you. We give you praise and honor. We glorify your name, Lord God. We thank you for this time together in your word. Lord God, we thank you that everything that you wanted us to know, you put in your word. Yes. And not only in your word, but you placed your word in our hearts, Lord God, so that we can live out all that you have for us to do. Lord God, we commit to you. We commit our lives and ourselves to you so that we can fulfill that which you've called us to in this life. 
We ask, Lord God, that you bless each and every person in each and every household. And Lord God, that the words that come out of my mouth are the words that will glorify and magnify your name. And it's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 Well, I asked the Lord what he wanted me to talk about. And um, I'm not going to give a title yet. What I want to do is just get into the word, and I'll, I'll let you know what he said. Um, our first scripture comes from Hebrews 11.6. And Hebrews 11.6 says, but without faith. It is impossible to please him. For he who comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. First, you got to believe. And then remember that he rewards us. Not each and every one of us, but those that diligently seek him. The reward is in the word. The reward is in the word. So if you're not diligent about being in the word, then you don't have all that God wants to give you. So the, so the word of God is important in our lives. That word diligently means to show care and conscientiousness in your work and in your duty. Not just your study, but at applying what you read, applying what you hear, and making it work in your life. Because remember, I'm not on an island by myself. When I get in the word, then what it does it encourages and, and, and builds me up, but you need it too. Everybody that you come in contact with needs that word that you're studying. We don't just study for ourselves. We have an assignment. Everybody has one. Whether you believe it or not, that's what God's intention was, for you to carry this word. And not just speak it, but to do it. Because, you know, more is caught than taught. You know, if, if I want you to really remember what I've studied, then I got I to gotta act it out. I got to go on and do it. Because that action is going to catch your eye. And you're going to see something. And you, it might change the way you think and the way you act. So that's what God wants us to do. I'm going to tell you a little bit about myself. I knew as a child, like my daughter said, teaching. I knew as a child that I loved to teach. I knew that from when I was very little. And I learned later on in life that that was a calling by God. It wasn't just an accident that I felt that way but it was a calling by God. So what I did, when I got old enough to go to school, go to college, I pursued it. I signed up for education at Indiana University. And my first year of college, I got a, after the first semester, uh, first year, I went back home for the summer. And this is my first job, because I didn't work before then, but I got a job uh, assisting a teacher in an elementary school. You'd have thought I had died and went to heaven. <laughs> when I was in that classroom, I mean, I was moving. I don't even know. I don't remember doing it. But what happened was the teacher was sitting there, and then another teacher came in. And I guess I was moving around so fast that teacher said, well, what's wrong with her? And he was looking at his papers. He looked up. He said, don't pay her no attention. She'll, get, she'll be all right after a while. And I thought that was such an insult. I was excited. I was doing my work. And, and he belittled what I was doing. 
But that was my training period. My training period was not just the knowledge I got from school, but it was putting into action what God gave me to do. And, and so I had that hands-on experience. It was a time of learning, a time of excitement, a time of expectation for me. I was so happy to be in it. We're going to talk about the disciples because they had those training periods also. They were called to service by Jesus. They were taught by Jesus. And their training period involved learning, excitement, and expectation. That training period is meant to impact each person personally. That's what training does that it builds something up in you that you're ready to flow, you're ready to go. And it builds you up. But we have an adversary. We have an adversary, Satan. And he has a job. His job is to stop you by any means necessary. That's his job. You know what? He's real good at his job. He's probably better at his job than we may be at our jobs. He's consistent. And when I say by any means necessary, he attacks by discouragement. He attacks when you're young. He attacks when you're alone. When you're separated from Jesus, or when you haven't acknowledged him, or when you gravitate to evil and to sin. Yes, yes. He attacks. He takes, he takes every situation to his advantage, and he uses it. And he doesn't care how old you are. When I see him attack children, I get really I mean, I can't, I can't contain myself. I get so angry about that. Before they get a chance to live, he has attacked them. Some of us. In John, I want to take you to John 13, beginning at verse 18. But first I want to say that the, in, in, those, in that chapter, Jesus, it was toward the end of his ministry. And what he wanted to do was go and take the disciples, and he wanted to wash their feet. And he said, wash their feet. It was an act of humility. And remember, we're talking about some teachable moments, because that was to teach them to be humble not to be prideful. Because when you're in that, in that group where you studied and you walked with Jesus, there's a tendency to be a little arrogant, to think that you're all that. But he had to show them that they were servants. Servants first. Not a big shot. So I'm going to read these verses you can follow along. In verse 18 it says, I do not speak concerning all of you, for I know whom I have chosen. This is New King James, I'm sorry. But that the scripture may be fulfilled. He who eats bread with me has lifted up his heel against me. So, so what Jesus is saying, I'm going to speak, but this doesn't really concern all of you. I'm getting ready to narrow some things down. Because we can all be in a room, but God can go right in for that one that he needs to deal with. And he said, the one who eats bread has lifted up his heel against me. Verses 19 
and 20. It says, now I tell you before it comes that when it does come to pass, that you may believe that I am he. So what he's doing is letting them know something before it happens. He's giving them an eye view of the future. And he told them that. It says in verse 20, most assuredly I say to you, he who receives whomever I send receives me. And he who receives me receives him who sent me. Okay, well here comes the teachable moment. What was told beforehand is revealed by Jesus. And it's going to connect to what is seen and heard in the future. Only he could talk like that. Only he knows what the future holds. But he connected them for them. So when they see it, you'll recognize it. Now that's a blessing because it can keep you out of a whole lot of turmoil if you pay attention. That's why it's so important to get in this word because the word will, will let you know what is going to happen and what already is happening. And it can move you into position because you're paying attention. The Holy Spirit reveals things and, and those things come to pass in the natural. The Holy Spirit in the supernatural reveals and then it comes to pass in the natural. It shouldn't catch you by surprise if he's already revealed it. The only way it does is when you're not paying attention. So it's possible to look and know what you really see. In verse 21, it says, when Jesus had said these things, he was troubled in his spirit and testified and said, most assuredly, I say to you, one of you will betray me. One of you is going to betray me. Verse 20, 26, let's skip to 26. Jesus answered, it is he whom I shall give a piece of bread when I have dipped it. And having dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, son of Simon. Verse 27. Now after the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Now Satan put it in his heart to betray Jesus. And Jesus said to him, what you do, do quickly. But no one at the table knew what, what, why he said that. So the lesson, our teachable moments, can be painful to the teacher. Because the teacher has your good in his heart. Your pastor. They have your best, your, the best for you in their heart. And when you go against the word or against what the teaching says, then it weighs heavy on their heart. It's painful. So it said Jesus was troubled in his spirit. They've been walking with him for a long time. It's coming to the end, but they don't really understand all that right then. They had been with Jesus, but Jesus has knowledge of what's getting ready to happen. The reason it troubled him is because, um, because Judas wasn't right. He just wasn't right. So when, you don't have to turn here, but in John 12, 3 through 6, 
it talks about Judas and what, what was it about him that was so different from everybody else? Judas opened himself up to satanic attack. Mary, in this instance, came and brought some anointing oil to anoint Jesus, to put that expensive oil on his feet, on his head, to anoint him. And Judas asked this question, why was this oil not sold for 300 denarii so that I could, we could give to the poor? And verse 5 of that, those scriptures says, this he said, not that he cared for the poor, but because he was a thief. He was a thief. Maybe the other guys didn't know it, but Jesus knew it. And he said that to make them think he was, you know, righteous. To make them think that. But it didn't fool Jesus. Because he can see beneath that stuff. You can come as clean as, as a whistle. And he can still see your heart that's dirty. And so we see right there that, that Judas had an ulterior motive. Jesus at this time was under scrutiny. Because when he said things to people that they didn't like or they didn't understand or they didn't agree with, it caused hatred about ev everything he, that came out of his mouth. They didn't like him. They hated him. So the question becomes, are we going to deny him or are we going to defend him? That's a question for each of each one of us got to answer that question. Amen. Are you going to deny him or defend him? Amen. And if you're following him, you can't help but defend him. Amen. You deny him when you have your own motive, right, 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 right. your own reason for doing things. In John 13th chapter, verse 33, it says, little children, I shall be with you a little while longer. You will see me, and as I said to the Jews, where I am going, you cannot come. So, so now I say to you. So at this point, Jesus is explaining to them. He's been telling them, but he is explaining it to them again that he's leaving this earthly assignment. It's completed. He's not going to stay any longer than what he's supposed to. Right. It's time to go. But he says this before he leaves in verse 34 and 35. He says, a new commandment I give you, to love one another as I have loved you. Jesus' example was love. And when he gave them that commandment, he gave them that commandment because he was going to be out the picture. So now they're going to be, each one have to determine what is right for themselves based on what they've been taught. And he left them and he said, don't make excuses. He didn't say this, but this is what he was actually saying. Don't make excuses why you can't love. The commandment was to love one another, to love people. But people make excuses because if you don't look like them, or you don't act like them, or you don't go to their church, or their, their place of business, then I don't want to have nothing to do with you. I can't love you because I love myself and everything that looks like me and acts like me, those are the ones I want to love. But we're living in a diverse world with many people of many backgrounds. 
And a lot of them we may not agree with. It has nothing to do with your love. You can disagree, but you got to love. You got to love. So in verse 36, Peter's focus was, instead of listening to the new commandment, Peter's saying, now where are you going? It's like he just forgot about it. Forgot about the commandment. Went right straight to where are you going? He negated everything that Jesus said. He put a light on where instead of the love. And many times that's what we do. What, what hits our mind that's important to us, that's what we remember. Not so much what Jesus said, but what we remember. God's instruction takes precedent over our questions. And many times, you're going to move in blind faith without seeing anything, without knowing how the outcome's going to be. God's going to ask you, move. What you going to say? Oh, but... Uh, what about so-and-so? What about this? What about that? He didn't ask you that. He already knows about those things. But he's asking you to, in blind faith, move. And he's not saying do it tomorrow. When he says move, this is a right now God, a right now word. So move. We move in the power of God when we don't have to know those things before or even if God chooses to unveil it, we don't have to know all that. We just move. And we trust that there's a blessing in the end of our movement. We don't have to know the whys, the wheres, the hows. It reminded me of when we used to go for a ride and all the kids were in the car. We had, I had some children, I have four daughters, but I had some of them would say, Mama, where are we going? Mama, where are we going? And then there were others that just sat back and enjoyed the ride. The ones that sat back and enjoyed the ride saw things that this, uh, the other ones didn't see. They had an experience. And that's what God wants us to do, to have an experience in him to sit back and enjoy the ride and see what he's doing. We are living in a time we can't afford to miss seeing what God's doing. But many will miss it because they want to know where you're going. Where am I going? Well, you know how you've been living. Where do you think you're going? Where do you think? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Jesus said, where I'm going, you can't follow me now, but you'll follow me afterward. And Peter's question, well, why can't I go now? Why can't I follow you now? Be very careful trying to be equal with God. Not his equal. It's not all about you. Peter was asking something. Jesus had already told him, you can't go now. What else is there to say? You take that and say, okay, evidently I got something else to do. <laughs> so I better do that. But then Peter messed it up and said, I, I'll lay down my life for your sake. Oh, you will. Can you walk the walk? Will you lay down your life? Jesus said, "When before the cock crows, you will have denied me three times. That's something Peter didn't know about himself. He thought because he was under Jesus' tutelage that he knew everything and could do everything. But Jesus knew the real Peter, the Peter that he wouldn't let other people know. 
That's the real us that he knows. He knows us deep inside. You may not even know yourself what you can do or what you shouldn't be doing. But God knows. He knows. And he sheds light on it. We don't know until we're faced with circumstances that require us to be more, require that more is in us that we know. Those circumstances are meant to change us. There are teachable moments. Peter would deny Jesus due to his fear of association. It's hot for Jesus right now. They want to kill him. And people hate him. So Peter has, Peter has to deal with, if he's going to follow Jesus, he's going to have to deal with the same things Jesus deals with. And, and actually... We do that too. People don't like us. You tell people today that you're a Christian. Mm. What is that? We don't, you know. You got if you if you're good in business and that kind of stuff that they can relate to or that they want to relate to, they're okay with that. But they're not okay with you being a Christian. Because you you're something that they don't know anything about. But they should know about it because if you're anywhere near them, they should know about it. So when we hear God's voice through the word of God, that's a teachable moment. We grow in the word and we grow in faith. Romans 10, 7 says, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God until our faith has been tested in those small little things, we can't grow to the next level of faith. We cannot grow to the next level of faith. This is an example. I'm sure my husband won't mind it. He started a garden in the backyard. Now, I think that's a big thing for me. Like, I've tried, and I couldn't do a thing. But he started a garden. And in the garden, he used some seeds. And then others, he bought bigger plants and planted them in the garden. Now, all plants require the same thing. They require light, good soil, and water for the rest of their lives. You stop it, they die. We require our born again, our spirit born again. We require reading and studying the word of God. Amen. We require to allow the word to refresh us through the Holy Spirit. Those are things that we require. You stop them, you die. You stop them, you die. And it's a slow death. Yeah. At first, you don't even realize it, yeah. that you're dying. But when you don't get what God wants you to have, it slowly chips away at whatever might have been there. We are living in trying and troubling times violence and mobs, people who are against God, hatred, COVID, wars and rumors of wars. In Corinthians 10.4, it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. There's some strongholds in us that must be pulled down. In John, the 14th chapter, verse 4 through 7, it says, Jesus, Jesus says, I go to prepare a place for you, that where I am, 
there you may be also. Where I go, you know, and the way you know. Now, one of those long-time disciples who've been walking with Jesus, who Thomas, this time Thomas is asking a question. Well, if we don't know where you're going, how are we going to know the way? One of those long-time disciples. <laughs> and Jesus in verse 6 and 7 says, I'm the way. You don't know that yet? <laughs> Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. And what I want to tell you today is Jesus is our GPS. Jesus is our GPS. He has already navigated what we're doing right now. And let me tell you, I, I say he's the GPS because one time I heard my pastor say this. He said, he was at the church, he said, God told him to put his GPS on to get home. Now, he, don't, he know every way to get to his house from the church. But being obedient, he put the... He put the GPS on because it wasn't whether you could get home. It was whether you could follow the direction to get home. It's not okay just to try to get home, but there are directions that God gives us that will get us to where we're supposed to be and the time we're supposed to be there. Can you follow the directions? Are you making up your own stuff? His way of faith is going to be different from what you think and what you know. Hallelujah. Faith relies on what God knows. And we have access by our faith. We got to get to the desired end that God has for each one of us. I determined a long time ago, Lord, I want, I don't want to leave here without doing and accomplishing my assignment. I don't want to leave here without doing that. It's important. Why, why else do we get up and, and study and read and all? We're trying to get to a point where God wants us to be. So we can leave here having done all that he's given us to do. Amen. He did everything he was supposed to do. Amen. He left a good example. Amen. Hallelujah. In verse 8, we're still in chapter 14. I'm almost finished, y'all. Verse 8 to 10. Now here's, it's Philip's time. They taking turns asking ridiculous questions. <laughs> And then Philip said, well, uh, show us the Father. Jesus said, if you've known me, you've known the Father. Duh. <laughs> <laughs> to see me is to see the Father. Verse 11, Jesus, believe me that I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Or if you can't believe that, if your mind won't let you believe that, at least for the sake of the works themselves, the miracles, the things that I've done since I've been here, at least believe me for that. And I'm not going to read this, but in verses 15 through 18, it says we have a promise of another helper. And that's the Holy Spirit. Not to know about him, but for him to indwell, to, to come inside of us, to help us. But I learned something that it hadn't been that maybe over 10 years ago. I hadn't even seen it. Verse 19, and I'm going to read to 24. A little while longer and the world will see me no more. But you will see me, because I live, you will live also. At that day you will know that I am my, 
in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. Verse 21. He who has my commandments and keeps them, it is he who loves me. And he who loves me will be loved by my Father, and I will love him and manifest or show myself to him. Verse 22. Judas Iscariot said to him, and it was, uh, Judas, not Iscariot, I'm sorry, because he's dead by now. Uh, this new Judas said to him, Lord, how is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? 23, Jesus answered and said to him, if anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home with him. When it says we will come to him, that means the Father and the Son. You have triune God on the inside of you. Amen. And a lot of times we don't realize the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost is in us because with the Trinity, there's nothing that we can't do Amen. and accomplish. But he's in us to, to guide us and lead us. Verse 24, he who does not love me does not keep my words. And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's who sent me. So at this point, I would title my lesson Firepower. Because the triune God in me, that's power. <laughs> that's unstoppable power. And so I had looked up the word firepower in the dictionary. Miriam Webster says it like this. She gives two, um, two uh, explanations of firepower. The first one is, the capacity, excuse me, that I have a little water. <laughs> My throat's dry. The first big one is the capacity as a military unit to deliver effective fire on a target. You know, effective fire means I hit it. And then the second definition is effective power or force, intellectual fire power, the scoring ability of a team or player, military tactical expertise. So one is intellectual, and the other one is the ability to have effective fire. Now, in the effective fire, it, it may mean that it's accurate, but it's not always accurate. Why? Because in the natural, it depends on a man to be able to fire and hit it every time. I'm sorry, don't, they don't do it every time. But that's effective power, effective fire. The second definition, when it has to do with intellectual power, in the natural, it's not always accurate either. It's based on what is in the mind of a man, his intelligence, how he sees things. And that's all he can go from, what he, what he understands. And so both of those definitions are not accurate. You won't always have effective fire. You won't always be able to apply your intelligence to a situation and overcome it. But then there's supernatural. Supernatural power. When you're being led by the spirit, that's what the firepower I'm talking about is. That's the real firepower the capacity as the body of Christ to deliver effective fire against the forces of darkness. 
and you'll hit it every time. Every time. Because you've got that Father, Son, and Holy Spirit in you to allow you to hit it every time. Hallelujah. It's always accurate. And it's based on the power of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. You ain't even got to try to do it yourself. Because it's not about you. It's about what he can do through you. That's what he wants to do. The second definition is the effective power of force, the intellectual firepower, the scoring ability of a child of God. Always going to be accurate. It's based on each person having the mind of Christ. The Bible tells us. That we, can have, that we have the mind of Christ in 1 Corinthians 2.16. And when you have the mind of Christ, you know what to do. Because he downloads for you. And Philippians 5 says, let this mind be in you which was also in Christ Jesus. So don't even worry about whether you know. You spend a little time with him in a corner somewhere and begin to speak to him, he'll let you know exactly what to do. And it may not make sense to you, but it doesn't have to, because it's going to be effective. The body of Christ. Um, I want to read something in, from 2 Corinthians. I'm almost finished, y'all. 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 6. And I'm going to read out of what they call the Passion Translation, where it says, for although we live in the natural realm, we don't wage military campaigns employing human weapons, using manipulation to achieve our aims. Instead, our spiritual weapons are energized with divine power to effectively dismantle the defenses behind which people hide. People hide behind a lot of stuff. Well, I, I don't have this. I'm poor. My health is bad. I, I, you know, my family is this. We live on the wrong side of the track. All these excuses to hide behind. God makes up the difference of what you can see. We have to, the problem is we got to learn to look at it from the, the supernatural perspective. Verse 5, we can demolish every deceptive fantasy that opposes God and break through every arrogant attitude that is raised up in defiance of the true knowledge of God. We capture the prisoners of war. Well, you know who the prisoners of war are? The thoughts. The thoughts that we have. We got to capture those. So those negative things that we are saying about ourselves, that's not how God sees you. That's how you see yourself. And you, we have got to learn to look past what we see on the outside and only speak what we know on the inside. I already told you who's inside of you. That's your firepower. That's your way to overcome where you see yourself. God sees you so much more. God sees you healed. God sees you delivered. God sees you having plenty of money. Being able to do all that he has called you to do. He knows what you need to accomplish what he told you to do. But the reason you don't have it is because you don't want to do it. You don't want to sacrifice and do what it takes to receive what God has for you. He got a plan for everybody in here. And for, you, for us to sit back and say, well, I, I, I'm too old now. No. No. I just had a birthday. I am 71 years old. And I praise God for every one of them 71 years. And I believe 
today more than I have ever believed that there's nothing that I can't do. I'm going to get to the desired end because it's my desire now. At first it was his desire, but now we both have the same desire. The same desire to accomplish what he said. You think he's going to tell you to do something and you're not having the ability to do it? That's a lie straight from the pit of hell. God, the devil don't care how old you are. He'll tell you a lying heartbeat. He's been lying to us since we've been here. Don't believe the lie. How do I capture the thought? Refusing it because it doesn't line up with the word of God? Oh, but we don't know that because we may not be reading the word of God. Oh, you mean I actually got to study? Yes, you actually got to study. You actually got to read. Just read it. <laughs> Amen. And to get a version you understand. All of us don't understand all of the King James. That's okay. There are books to help us. But get a version you understand. It's the same word. We are the head and not the tail. In verse 6 it says, Since we are armed with such dynamic weaponry, we stand ready to punish and trace any trace of rebellion as soon as you choose to uh, complete obedience. You choose complete obedience. Not half obedience. Not obedience in some things and not others, but complete obedience. That's when you have victory. We are the generation, ladies and gentlemen, currently standing in the last days. I didn't know if I would make it to this, but we've been in the last days for a while. And we're still standing. And we're standing right in the middle of it. I want to read the characteristics, which I may, you may have already heard these before, but in 2 Timothy 3, 1 through 9, it talks about the characteristics of the last days. This is my last point here. But you need to be aware that in the final days, the culture of society will become extremely fierce. This is the Passion Translation. People will be self-centered, we see that. Lovers of themselves and obsessed with money. They will boast of great things as they strut around in their arrogant pride and mock all that is right. They will ignore their own families. They will be ungrateful and ungodly. They will become addicted to hateful and malicious slander, slaves to their own desires. They will be ferocious and belligerent haters of what is good and right. Used to be you would tell somebody what God said that's good and right. They don't want to hear that. They don't even listen to you now. With brutal treachery, they will act without restraint. You can't hold, you can't make them walk straight. <laughs> Bigoted, wrapped in clouds of their conceit, they will find delight in the pleasures of this world more than the pleasures of the living God, of the loving God. They may pretend to have a respect for God, but in reality, they want nothing to do with God's power. Stay away from people like these. For they are the ones who worm their way into the hearts of vulnerable women, spending the night with those who are captured by their lust and steeped in sin. They are always learning but never discover the revelation, knowledge of truth. History has given us an example of this with uh, Janus and Jambres in Egypt, how they withstood Moses and Aaron. 
So it will be in the last days with those who reject the faith with their corrupt minds and arrogant hearts, standing against the truth of God. But they will not advance, for everyone will see their madness just as they did with these other people. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for us to use our firepower. It's time for us to stop making excuses but to use what God has given us. Because guess what? You're not going to get a new body. You're not going to get, you know, use what you got, and what is what I'm trying to say. You may see it one way, but God says, if he tells you to do something, he sees your body as something else, being able to do what he asks you to do. So... Our lesson here is about keeping ourselves prepared and having faith in God that he knows you better than you know yourself and doing what it is he calls you to do. Let's bow our heads. Lord God, we thank you and we praise you. We give you honor and glory and praise this, e this morning. We ask, Lord God, that you would just bless these, your people, Continue to bless them, Lord. We thank you, Lord, that you don't give up on any one of us. That you, when the word comes forth and you tell us what we need to know, Lord God, we pray for each and every one of us that we will take the words that you've given us today and move with it. Lord, let not just ponder it in our hearts, but if we ponder it, Lord, help us to do it. To do what you have called us to do to listen to your words, Lord God. We know that from the scriptures, it's possible to follow you for a long time and fall away. It's possible for us to never have followed you. But Lord God, we're confronted right now with what you're saying to each and every one of us. We pray right now that you'll search our hearts, Lord God, individually, and that you will show us where you want us to work or where you want us to move. I claim right now in the name of Jesus that none of us will leave here without completing our assignment in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Our assignments may look different, they may look the same, but whatever it is that you want us to do, Lord God, we give you precedence in our lives. We put you at the top, even above ourselves. We make room for you, Lord God. Where there was no room, where you had to compete with our children and our husbands and our grandchildren, where you had to compete, Lord. We're saying today, you, there's no competition anymore that we can love them and love you. But above them, we place you as our head and our master. Hallelujah. You're the one that gives us courage. You're the one that gives us abilities. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God that these things, that we've learned today will be effective in our lives from now until we leave here. We thank you, God, for trusting us with your word, for showing us your plan for our lives. Oh, glory to your name, Lord God. Thank you that you're not finished with us. Thank you, Lord God, that this is a new beginning for us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We may not have acknowledged you in our past. We, we said we know you, but to know is to do, Lord God. So, Lord God, help us where we're weak, make us strong. Where we're inconsistent, make us consistent, Lord God. Where there is hatred, make us love, Lord God. Hallelujah. 
give us a part of you. It's already there, but help us acknowledge that part of you so that we can have effective fire during these last days. It's important that what you tell us to tear down will be torn down. What you tell us to build up will be built up. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, glory to your name. And Lord, every time we think we can't, let us find a corner to go into prayer so you can tell us again how much we can. Hallelujah. How much we can do. We can do all things through Jesus Christ who strengthens us. We thank you for your strength. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your movement in this earth. Nothing takes you by surprise. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And when they think we're too old, when they think we're too tired, Lord God, give us that shot of energy that will do those things and accomplish those things in your name. We pray this prayer knowing that it's already done. We don't even have to ask for it anymore. It's already done. We thank you, Lord, that we walk in the Spirit. We walk in the Spirit. And we walk to the things that we were afraid to confront. We confront them and we take them over just as you said we could. We believe it, we receive it, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, we do pray. Amen. Thank God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Glory, hallelujah. He's a wonder in my soul. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Oh, glory to you. Order my steps in your word, dear Lord. Lead me, guide me every day. Send your anointing, Father, I pray. Order my steps.
Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. Have you have used this vessel today? Restore virtue. Thank you for the anointing, God. Because of the manifestation of your anointing, burdens have been removed because of the firepower. Yokes have been destroyed because of the firepower. We thank you now, God, for a greater anointing. We pray in the name of Jesus, God, for greater doors to be opened. For, Father, the wisdom that is spoken through this vessel in this season is needed for all ages. God, we pray in the name of Jesus. And as she stated, she wants to finish what you have called. God, we pray that in confirmation with the choir that you would order her steps. In the name of Jesus, we thank you, Father. Father, we pray for those who are in the house, those who are online that do not know Christ as their personal Savior. I pray with hearts open. We were told today that when Jesus was asked, where are you going? And he said that according to how we live, we know where we're going. And Father, we know that it is your desire that no soul perish. And as we were told, God, that we would just use the GPS and allow you to give us direction. That God, no matter where we are in life, if we would just yield our lives unto you, if that's you today, the Bible declares that if you would Move according to your heart if you will confess that which is in your heart by revelation from God that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God that died for your sins. If you make that confession of your heart from your mouth, God says you shall be saved and you shall be born again. And there is a promise according to Ephesians 1 and 13 and 14. That upon that confession, the Holy Spirit comes and seals you as a mark of God. And he claims you as his child in his kingdom. So, Father, if that's you today, just right where you are, whether it's in this house or at your house, just say, Lord, I yield today. I heard about the firepower and something hit my soul. And, Lord, today I yield my life unto you. And I ask that you would direct me in life, God, to fulfill the plan and the purpose you have for me. Lord, no longer do I want to live and order my steps. I want my steps to be ordered by you. Father, we pray in the name of Jesus for those souls who have yielded today. Or even for those, Lord God, who have come to themselves, Lord God, to repent and to return unto you. We pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, that you would minister to them, Lord, right where they are. And for those, Lord, who have come to know Christ, that you would lead them to a place of worship, God, a true place of worship. The true and living God, where he dwells, Lord, because we're living in times, Lord, where the devil appears as light in many churches. He blankets and comes into many pulpits, Lord, and sings in choirs and plays instruments, Lord, as light, but we need the true and living light to lead them to a place of worship, God, where there's truth and integrity and righteousness submitted unto you, Lord, in the name of Jesus. This is our prayer. Amen.
Amen, amen. Can we give it up for the woman of God again? Come on, we can do better than that. She truly blessed us today. Thank you. And, and I want to say personally thank you for telling me about my firepower and stop making excuses. Because I, I started on something and I said, Lord, nobody supports me. How can I do this? And I could hear him as plain as day say to me, you just do what I told you to do, and I'll worry about the rest. So thank you for that word, because it blessed me. If it didn't bless anybody else, it blessed me today, and I thank you. Thank you. Next, we will have um, our altar call by Sister Emma Jean Jordan. Church, let us pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, I come to you at this appointed time as a disobedient child before an ever loving, precious Father. Lord, asking you, Lord, just to have mercy on us right now, Lord. Lord, today when I walked into your house, I felt like we are just dealing with so much and seemed like we forgot that we just need to call on you, Lord. And Lord, when I say call on you, just call your name. It's the sweetest name I know, and it's Jesus. And I called Jesus, and it just looked like all my burdens just washed away. So we... We're having some difficult times. People are worried about the economy. They're worried about COVID. They're worried about their jobs, their finance. But Lord, we just need to bring it to the altar and just call on your name. Because when you call on your name, Lord, everything is all right. And I have learned in this walk that Lord, that you are my shepherd. And I need not worry about one thing, Lord. So I stand before you today, Lord, just to say thank you. Thank you, Lord, for all of your many blessings. Lord, because I am so grateful. I'm in my season of thankfulness and gratefulness. And I know who holds my hand. Because you told me a long time ago that I would never leave you nor forsake you. So Lord, I'm holding on to you because I know you are the one that will lead me in the path of righteousness for your sake, Lord. And Lord, I want to be a firepower for you, Lord. I want to be able to call on you anytime, day or night because I know and you have and you will answer. And for that, Lord, I am thankful. Lord, I ask you to bless each and every one that is here today. Each and every one that knows to lay their burdens on you, Lord, because you care for us. You're gonna take care of us. And we do that, Lord. You have promised that you'll be so ever grateful to give us just what we need. And Lord, I'm trusting you and in you only, Lord, because I know you will make a way out of no way because you have done that for me so many times. And I, Lord, I know you've done it for so many of us in this house today. So for that, Lord, I just say thank you, thank you, thank you, Lord, because it's in Jesus' name that I pray and ask it all. These and other blessings. Amen. Amen. And thank you, Sister Emma Jean. Now we will have appreciation by Sister Jeanette Lewis, and after that, we'll have Pastor Middleton give us the benediction. All praise belong to the Lord for this service today. To Pastor Middleton, to Sister Linnell, good to see you today to uh, Sister Kamara, who introduced her mother to your family, to your husband, her brother Stafford, to New Pleasant Grove family, to Women on a Mission, we say thank you today. And to our choir and musicians, we thank you uh, for serving us today. Sister Julia, we say thank you. To Minister Stafford, 
Truly, we thank God. I have not ever heard you before, but today I must say you brought the fire power with you today. I thank God. And you said that you didn't have a title yet, but before you said anything, I had made up my own title. And that was, are we going to deny or to defend? But then I realized I had to wait. There was more. You said some more things, so many things that we were able to take back with us today. May they be effective in our lives. But I leave everybody with this, especially myself. Follow the directions on how to get home. Jesus is our GPS. Thank you so much. We appreciate you coming to share with us today. We will return again. We thank God for you, and may you continue to, may he continue to bless you. Thank you. All right, for some of us, this is the best part of the service. Time to go home. Amen. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. You're ready to go. We encourage through the word today. Amen. Can we give God thanks? Can we show him appreciation that he chose his vessel to minister his word today? Amen. So much was, was spoken. So much was given. Amen. And I just pray that we all take this into consideration that it spoke to us all individually. We have great work to do in these perilous times, and all of us have an assignment. Amen. God bless you. Let's stand and let's prepare to leave so you can have the balance of your day. On behalf of Sister Julia Hamilton, who's excited that the Buccaneers are going to the Super Bowl. <laughs> I ain't gonna lie, I'm happy too. <laughs> Little Joe, amen. Let's look to the Lord. Father, we can never, ever come close to thanking you for how faithful you are to yourself by being faithful unto us. And many times, God, it's not anything that we do of ourselves, but you are faithful to the call that you have on our lives. And God, we're grateful for that call because when we try to abandon what you have assigned us to, you allowed, God, your word to draw us back through your Holy Spirit, God, that we pick up the baton and we continue to move forward in what you have called us to do. I pray today, Lord, that as we have heard this word, this rhema word, God, in this season that is greatly and gravely needed, that we hear the word, God, and apply it to our lives, God. And God, we thank you that as one soweth the seed, another waters, it's you that gives the increase in the word. So we thank you, Lord, for the fruit that have come from the seeds that were sown through your vessel today, Minister Stafford. That God, in the days and weeks to months to come, Lord God, what took place today shall give fruit in the future. God, in that season of reaping the fruit, God, let us take the seeds from the fruit and sow it into the hearts of others, that we may see a bountiful harvest, or as those who were raised in the country would say, a bumper harvest, where there is an abundance, Lord, above and beyond that we can ever imagine a thing. Now may the love of God, the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest upon us, rule and guide us each and every day of our lives. And it is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen, amen, amen. God bless you all.